today we are going to have a very interesting session we are going to learn about data encryption standard des before going into des let us take a look at our uh, previous class concepts in our previous class we are looking at block cipher do you remember what is a block cipher the key concept in a block cipher is whenever you have a message that should be sent this message is divided into equal sized blocks so these blocks can be of 64 bits 128 bits or 256 bits so message gets split into blocks and uh, these blocks are then given to an encryption strategy wherein we convert the plain text to a cipher text so we were looking at so many different modes of block ciphers in our last class this is one of the modes called electronic code book and we looked at another mode called the cipher block chaining wherein we take the plain text of 64 bits and then we have an initialization vector of 64 bits we perform an xr and we feed this to an encryption strategy so in all the modes we are talking about some encryption and decryption algorithms or strategies so what is this encryption strategy today we are going to learn one of the block cipher encryption strategies that is d e s nothing but data encryption standard so what is this data encryption standard it's an encryption algorithm that was put forward in the 1970s it was developed in the early 1970s by ibm and it was published as an official information processing standard in 1976 so let's go and uh, take a look at what is des First, we'll take a look at the block diagram of DES, an overview of this algorithm using a block diagram. So I have taken some time to construct this block diagram. So let us understand this. We'll have messages coming in which are divided into blocks. When you talk about block cipher, DES is a block cipher. Therefore, we have messages divided into blocks. Each block is of 64 bits. So this is the message that we want to encrypt. So we'll take every block and then we'll run it through our encryption algorithm to finally get the cipher text. When you take a look at this block diagram, we have some important faces in this diagram. The very first thing is we'll be using a key. For encryption, we need a key and that key size is 64 bit, which will be fed to the key generator. And this key generator will be rearranging the bits in the key and then it will generate sub keys and this will lead to 16 sub keys you see here we are going to generate 16 sub keys and each sub key will be of 48 bits in length so we'll take a 64 bit key we'll do some permutations and we'll reduce it to 56 from this 56 we'll employ a strategy from which we'll be getting 16 sub keys i will say these are sub keys 16 sub keys each of length 48 bits so that is one part so once when the keys are ready the next thing is we'll be taking in the message we'll be understanding what is permutation and division of the block of message that you are taking in so this this is another step once when this is done the output of this block is given to a block by name round so you can see here we have almost 16 rounds all these rounds perform the same action but with different input and one good thing is all the rounds perform the same action the only thing is the output of one of the round will be the input of the next round so the output of this round will be the input of this round otherwise the concept behind all these rounds is the same only thing is the output from each round is given to the next round and the output just propagates like that we complete 16 rounds finally we'll perform some final permutations and then we'll be giving the cipher text out so that is the overall uh, very higher level view of what data encryption standard is all about we learn this algorithm in three parts the first part we'll take a look at this we'll take a key and we'll see how we are going to generate 16 sub keys how to generate 16 sub keys from this 64 bit key 
which is taken as an input that will be our say we'll call that to be the first phase of our learning after this we'll take a block of message a 64 bit block of message we will see how that block is given to a permutation and division module and uh, what kind of permutation happens for this block of message we'll understand this this can be our phase two of the learning so permutation is nothing but rearranging the bits in the blocks we'll understand how that uh, uh, rearrangement really happens and what is dividing or what is the division of bits into uh, separate blocks we'll understand this in phase two and in phase three we'll go and understand what is the algorithm behind each and every round so we'll understand what is this round what really works behind these rounds so once when you understand it for round one the same concept applies for all the 16 rounds only thing is the output from one of the rounds will be given as an input to the another round so that will be your phase three of the learning so once when that is done finally the output of the final round will be given to final permutation right and this will lead to a cipher text so we will consider this to be the phase four of our learning so we'll understand this algorithm in four phases first we'll see how to generate sub keys next we'll see how to take a block of message and how to perform permutation and division and then give that as an input to the round and we'll understand the algorithm behind a round and that algorithm is applicable for all the rounds and we'll see how we generate the final output from the final round and in the last phase we'll understand how to take this output and perform some final permutation and generate the cipher text so that is the overall view we'll now start with phase one generating sub keys so our algorithm starts is we'll have a key in hexadecimal so this is the input key and you can very well see here we have 16 digits of hexadecimal character here so this leads to a 64 bit key so this is the 64 bit key we are going to use in our algorithm so the very first step in generating sub keys is we are going to take the key and then we are going to apply some permutation permutation is nothing but rearranging the bits in this key and also reducing the number of bits we are going to reduce it from 64 to 56 bits that will be the first step and for that we will be utilizing a pc1 table that table i have given here so how we are going to utilize this table is we'll take go to the very first number it says 57 so we have to go to the 57th bit in this key the 57th bit is here so this 57th bit will become the first bit in our output likewise we take go to the 49th bit 49th bit is here this will become our second bit in the output like that we traverse all the bits and then we create our output so i have given the output here so this is the output that is created by traversing all the bits and applying it on this particular key we'll get the output as k plus so the number of bits in the output is actually equal to the number of digits in this table so how many digits we have in uh, every column you see here one two three four five six seven eight so we have eight digits in a column likewise how many uh, columns we have one two three four five six seven so seven into eight we are going to have 56 digits in our output so we add 64 bits here and this 64 bits by using this pc1 table we were able to arrive at 56 bits of key and we have also reordered the bits in this particular key so that is the very first step in generating sub keys i hope you are able to follow me let us go to the next step the next step is we are going to take this 56 bit key that we have attained by using pc1 table from the previous slide and then we are going to split this as two halves each half having 28 bits so we'll take k plus and split it like this that is c0 and d0 
the first 28 bits will be C0 and the next 28 bits will be D0. We know that the size of this key is 56 bits. So we are just dividing that into two equal halves. Very simple and clear. The next step is we will take the C0 and D0 which we attained from the previous slide and we will be using a table containing schedule of left shifts. So we will be using this table in going forward with our output. I tell you how to use this table. So we will go to iteration number 1 and it says number of left shifts is 1. So we will be applying a circular left shift by 1 on this particular input. And uh, what will happen when you apply a circular left shift of one bit, this one will be pushed to the end. And all the other bits will be moved forward by one position. Because we say number of left shift should be one, it's a circular left shift, so that happens. Likewise, when you do a circular left shift for D0 by one bit, you're going to push this zero at the end, and zero will be coming here, and we push all the bits one position to the left. So we take C0, D0 and we go to iteration number 1. We see number of sh left shifts we have to do is 1. So we, we do a circular left shift by 1 bit on C0 and D0. The output we are going to get is C1 and D1. So as a result of the left shift, we have received this output. Now we go to iteration number 2 and we see that we have to perform one left shift on this uh, C1 and D1. So what we do is we just push this one to the end. It's a circular left shift by one digit. Likewise, we push this one in D1 to the end. So it's a circular left shift by one digit. So we are going to use the schedule of left shifts for our operations here. So once when you perform that, we'll be getting C2 and D2. C2 and D2 is nothing but the output of that. Because of the left shift, we have received this output. Now we'll go to iteration 3 and we will apply the number of left shifts. Now it says number of left shifts should be 2. So what does that mean? You are going to take 2 digits from this place and then we are going to push it to the end. And we are going to push all the remaining two digits to the left by 2. Likewise, we are going to apply that to D22. So we are going to take 2 digits and move it to the end and we'll push all the digits to the left. So as a result of this, we'll be getting C3, D3. So for C3, D3, what you're going to do, you're going to go to the next uh, uh, number here, that is iteration number four, and then what, how many sh numbers should be shifted, if shifted? It should be by two. So again, we are going to do this, we are going to take these two zeros, push it here, and then push all the remaining digits to the left. Likewise, take these two digits, push it at the end, and then push all the digits to the left. So as a result of iteration number four on C3D3, the output will be C4D4. You can see these two zeros here and zero one here. Likewise, you have to continue the process till we go and reach iteration number 16 so that we achieve C16 and D16. Quite hectic, but the process is very simple and repetitive. Let us go with iteration number five. We have to do a left shift by two numbers or two digits. So you just push this zero zero here and uh, it goes to the end. You push zero one to the end, it goes to the end. So because of iteration number five applied on C4D4, we are going to get C5D5. Next, we have to take iteration number six. It says do a left shift by two bits. So again, to get C6, D6, you have to push this to the end and you have to push this to the end. That's it. So like this, you have to continue your iterations till you reach iteration number 16 and corresponding to the iterations, you have to perform left shifts as given here, number of left shifts. So I hope you have understood this. Like this, we carry on for 16 iterations and we'll be getting C6, D6, C7, D7, C8, D8, C9, D9, C10, D10, C11, D11, C12, D12, C13, D13, C14, D14, 
C15, D15 and C16, D16. So how did we achieve all these things? It's very simple. You just go through so many different iterations on C0, D0, which we are attained from the key. And then you do the number of left shifts, as I told you. This will lead you to this result. After this, what we are going to do is, we are going to take C1, D1. We have achieved from a previous slide, right? We take C1, D1. We will combine that. So this is nothing but C1, D1. After combining this, we are going to rearrange the bits in this. For this, we are going to use a permutation table as usual. So this permutation table is called PC2. And this will help us in rearranging the bits here. And so after applying PC2, the number of bits here will be reduced to 48. And also the order of the bits will be rearranged. Let's see how to use PC2. It's very similar like what you have done in the initial slide by using PC1. So it says go to the 14th bit in your input. So what is the 14th bit here? That is 0. And make it the first bit in your output. Likewise, go to the 17th bit. So 17th bit is here. Make it the second number in your output. Likewise, go to the 11th bit. So 11th bit is here. So you make it the third number in your output. So like that you traverse the entire chart, you'll be, you'll be getting how many digits out? 48 bits out. Why I say you'll get 48 bits? Because you see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight elements we have in one column. Like that how many columns we have? Six columns. So 8 into 6 is 48. So after you apply PC2 on C1, D1, you'll be getting an output like this. This is key one. So after applying PC2 on C1, D1, your output will be key K1. And what is the length of this key? 48 bits. And this is the first sub key. In the block diagram, we have seen 16 sub keys should be generated, each of uh, length 48 bits. So we have attained our first sub key. Like that, we have to find all the sub keys. So we know C2, D2. We can take C2, D2. And what is the next step? We have to combine them. And once when you have combined, we have to use our PC2 table. And this PC2 table will reduce this 56 bits to 48 bits. And it will also rearrange the bits here. So let's go and see how to do that. So go to the 14th bit. So you go to the 14th bit here and uh, you make it the first bit out in your output. Likewise, go to the 17th bit, make it the first bit in your output. Like that, you build the output using this table. And this table has got 48 uh, numbers. So your output will also be 48 digits. So this is the output we have seen. So we get key 2 that is sub key 2 which is 48 bits so this is our sub key 2 and for this we have used our input as c2 d2 like that we can go and generate for c3 d3 we can take and we can apply pc2 on c3 d3 and we can get k3 like that we have to continue for all the 16 sub keys we are going to generate so that will finally lead us to all the 16 sub keys. So all these 16 sub keys are of length 48 bits. So that's how you generate sub keys. And uh, taking a look back at our block diagram, we have finished learning the phase one. Now we know how to take a 64 bit key, apply some permutation, using PC1, then divide it into two blocks. So PC1 reduces that to 56 bits. We divide it into two blocks as C0, D0, each of 28 bits. Then we use the iterations and we apply the 16 iterations and we apply so many left shifts so that we get C1, D1, C2, D2. And from that, we'll use PC2 to 
to reduce all those C1s, uh, C0, T0 and C1, D1, C2, D2, right? So we'll reduce that C and D and to K and keys. And the PC2 helps us in reducing the number from 56 to 48 bits and we will get all our 16 sub keys each of length 48 bits so our phase one is run, uh, is done i hope you are all clear with how to generate 16 sub keys now let us go to phase two what i told is phase two we'll take one block of message which is 64 bits we will then apply permutation on that block of bits and we'll also divide those block of bits that will be our phase two so we'll now learn this phase we'll be working with the input message so now let us take the message so this is the message block it is of 64 bits in length and we have to achieve some permutation on this what is permutation just rearranging the bits here for that, we'll be using the initial permutation table, the IP table, which is given here. What this table does is it's the same thing. Go to the first number, it says go to the 58 bit and make it the first bit in your output. So what is the 58 bit, 58 bit here? This is the 58 bit and you're going to make the output bit one to be the 58th bit. Likewise, what is the next number? 50th bit. What is the 50th bit here? So this is the 50th bit. We're going to make that as bit number two in our output. So like that, you're going to use the numbers here, take the bits corresponding to those numbers and move it to our output. So we'll be getting an output like this. Okay, this we have achieved by using our initial permutation. The next step will be taking this and we'll be dividing this into two halves. Each half will have 32 bits. The entire size of this is 64 bits. So we'll be dividing that as L0, which is of 32 bits, and then R0, which is of 32 bits. So we take the permitted output from the previous slide and then we are going to divide it into two equal halves as L0 and R0. So we have finished the phase two two that is taking a message block of 64 bits and then applying the permutation that is using IP one table applying the permutation and dividing that into two equal halves of 32 bits each. So this is our phase two which we have finished right now. We've already finished understanding phase one generation of sub keys. This is also done. And uh, now we have to move on to the very important phase that is understanding the algorithm behind each of these rounds. As I told you, if you understand for round one, the same concept applies for all the rounds. Only thing is the output of a round is given as input to the next round. So let's take a look at all that 16 rounds. We'll first understand what happens in round one. The input to round one is these two 32 bits that we have achieved in phase one that will be the input to round one we'll go and see what happens in round one first so in round one this will be your input l0 and all zero each of 32 bits right so this will be our input and in every round we are going to calculate this this is the core algorithm behind every round what it says ln is equal to rn minus 1 where n is the round number and rn is equal to ln minus 1 xr a function which takes rn minus 1 comma kn where k is the key so our round is 1 so n will be 1 what we'll do is we'll go and substitute the value for n to be 1 in this equation let me take an eraser, erase this. So when n is equal to 1, what will happen? L1 is equal to R1 minus 1 and R1 is equal to L1 minus 1 plus F. And then this function will have R1 minus 1 comma K1. 
So n is one year. That's what we have done. So this will lead to L1 is equal to R0 and R1 is equal to L0 plus F. And the function will take R0 and K1. We have all the data here, right? We know what is R0. R0 is the input from our previous phase. So R0 is here. We know what is L0. The L0 is also here. And we should learn what this function is. What is the output of this function? We should compute this function. We'll be learning that in the coming slides. We know what is R0. R0 is already given. What is this K1? K1 is nothing but the sub key 1, which is 48 bits. We have already computed that. Do you, do you remember all the sub keys we have computed? The 16 sub keys, each 48 bits, right? So we are going to take K1 from there and we are going to use K1 here. So we have data to compute L1 and R1. The only thing is we should understand what this function does. What is the output of this function? If you get the output, we can go and XR it with L0 and then we'll also have L1 and R1. So this will be the output. What is L1 and R1? This will be the output of round one. So output of round one will be L1 and R1. This will be going to the next round as an input. So this is also the input for round two. So input for round two will be L1 and R1. And round two will go and produce L2 and R2. And round three will go and produce the output L3 and R3. Like that, we'll traverse through all these 16 rounds to finally get L16 and R16. So before going in for the output L1 and R1, we should know what this function does. That will be our discussion in the next slide. And uh, substituting for n is equal to 1, so we have achieved what is k1 already, that is the sub key 1. We know what is l1, that is equal to r0. So r0 is given. And what is r1, this is what we have to compute. We know what is l0, it's already there. Whereas this function takes r0, which we know, but k1 also we know. But what this function does with r0 and k1, that we have to analyze and understand. That will be our next slide's concept understanding what is this function and how it works in round one with the input as r0 and k1 the very first step is we'll take r0 this is 32 bits in length actually right and we have to expand this we'll expand this to 48 bits in length how will we expand this we'll be padding some bits to this and we'll be expanding it to 48 bits for that, we'll be using the help of this table called EBIT selection table. This table works in the same way that we have understood all the PC1, PC2 tables. So what it says is go to the 32nd bit in R0 and make it the first bit in your output. So what is the 32nd bit? Zero. So that will be our first bit in our output. Likewise, go to the first bit in R0. What is the first bit? That is 1. Make it the second bit in your output. So like that, you're going to use this EBIT selection table. And how many digits you have in the selection table? You see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 8 numbers in one column. Like that, you have 6 columns. So 6 into 8, you're going to get 48 bits in the output. So this output is given here. So how many bits here? 48 bits. So let me erase that uh, thing here. Yeah. And this output is represented as EFR0. So you have taken R0, expanded it from 32 bits to 48 bits, and we have rearranged the bits using this EBIT selection table. And then the output is represented as EFR0. This is the output we achieve. We are not yet done with the function. Let's go to the next step in this function. So we have computed E of R0. We know what is E of R0 from a previous slide. Next, what we are going to do is we are going to take this key K1 and then we are going to perform an XR with E of R0. So we know what is key K1. This is a sub key which is 48 bits in length. So we'll take this key, this plus symbol means we'll do an XOR operation on this result that we have achieved in the previous slide. So 
that will be nothing but k1 when xor with e of r0 this is the result so the xor operation result is given here and we can take a look at this result as 48 bits this is totally 48 bits in length or we can say it's 8 group of 6 bits so we have 6 bits in one group 6 bits in one group like that we have 8 groups so totally we have 48 bits so we are still in the computation of the output of this function and from a previous slide we we have taken the key we have performed an xr with er0 we have attained this result i told you we had eight groups each with six bits in length with a purpose so let me say that each group of six bits i will call that as b1 so this six bits as b2 six bits here as b3 like that so we take every group of six bits we say that is b1 b2 b3 b4 and b5 b6 b7 b8 so with these six bits we are going to do a very weird thing we are going to use them as addresses in tables called s boxes and we are going to calculate s1 b1 s2 b2 s3 b3 so we are going to see how to calculate everything here s1 b1 s2 b2 s3 b3 to compute s1 b1 we will be using b1 what is b1 the six bits that is represented here to compute s4 b4 we will be using b4 but what is b4 the group of six bits here okay now let's understand how to compute s1 b1 first and then we'll go to the other computations so we'll see how to compute this s1 b1 For we know what is b1 what is b1 the six bits here that is represented here to compute s1 of b1 we have to use this s box here so since it's s1 this box i'm going to take and we are going to compute s1 of b1 it's a weird strategy let me tell you what is what it is you take this bit the starting bit and the ending bit you write it what is this 0 0 0 0 is nothing but 0 so we go to row number 0 here so you take the first bit and the last bit you determine the row in the s box so that is row number 0 and you take the other bits in between so what are the other bits in between it is 1 1 0 0 this is nothing but 12 so you take this 12 and go to the corresponding column number so what is the column number 12 here the column number is 12 and the row number is 0 what is the value you get 5 and you represent 5 in 4 bits 0 1 0 1 so this is actually s1 of b1 so we have taken these six bits b1 we have used that in s1 what is s1 of b1 you compute that using this s box and it's a weird computation you you take the six bits in b1 the first bit and the last bit together you find the value that value will give you the row number in the s box so the row number here is zero and likewise you take the remaining bits that are in between so it is one one zero zero you compute the decimal value that is eight four two one right so this is twelve so twelve is nothing but the column so the column number is twelve row number is zero so you get five and five how it is represented in binary it is zero one zero one so that is the value of s1 b1 so that's what i have given here The value of s1 b1 is 0101 01. that is nothing but 5 in decimal so we finish computing s1 b1 like that we should compute s2 b2 s3 b3 up till s8 b8 and for each computation when i take s2 there is a separate s box table called s2 for s3 we have a separate s box table called s3 and we know what is b1 b2 b3 from the result here so we should go ahead and compute all these things.
little tedious computation but the process is very simple and keep in mind we are still computing the output of this function that takes r0 and k1 as input so we finished computing s1 b1 let us go and compute s2 b2 let's take some practice so s2 b2 what is b2 here the six bits from the input so this is b2 and to compute s2 of b2 we need this s table or s box s2 take the first digit and then the last digit so it is 0 1 so row number is nothing but 1 so we're going to go to row number 1 so row number here is 0 1 2 3 so we're going to go to row number 1 to take the remaining bits here what are those remaining bits is nothing but 1 0 0 0 so this is nothing but column number so the column number here is 8 since we have one year so we're going to go to column number 8 so it's uh, column numbers we'll just write it out 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so it is row number 1 and column number 8 so the value is 12 okay so the output of s2 b2 is nothing but 12 12 is represented as 1100 that is the output so finish computing s1 b1 we finish computing s2 b2 is that clear take the first bit last bit compute the row number take the remaining bits compute the column number take the row number column number find a match in the s2 box and then you represent that value say if you get 12 you represent that in binary so that becomes your s2 b2 likewise we should continue with s3 b3 i know you guys are tired but uh, let's take another thing s3 b3 let's understand that b3 is nothing but these six bits and uh, i have given b3 here to compute s3 b3 we need this uh, s box s3 and how will you compute we have to take the first bit and the last bit that becomes the row number row number is 0 so here row numbers are 0 1 2 3 so we are going to go to row number 0 we take the remaining bits here what are the remaining bits so it is 1 1 1 1 that's nothing but 15 so you have to go to column number 15 so it's 0 1 2 3 i'm just giving the column numbers here 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 so we have 15 columns so you go to the 15th column row number 0 it is 8 so how you represent 8 in binary 1 0 0 so that is the value of s3 p3 got it like that you should continue with b4 b4 can you try 1 and 0 so what is the row number here row number is 2 so you can 0 1 2 so we are in row number 2 you take the remaining digits what is that 1 1 0 1 so what is this this is column number 13 so this is column number 13 and row number 2 so the value is 2 how you represent 2 in binary 0 0 1 0 so what is the value of s4 p4 0 0 1 0 so you should not have any confusion on how you use the s box and compute s1 p12 s8 b8 so i'm not going to go through the other things it's just given here s5 b5 is computed like this s6 b6 is computed so for each one we are going to have a separate s box table s7 b7 we'll use s7 table so like that we compute s8 s8 is nothing but 0 1 1 1 so we have finished computing all these values s1 b1 s2 b2 s3 b3 s4 b4 s5 b5 up till s8 b8 so for each uh, calculation we add four bits so finally when we write all the values the result together for s1 b1 till s8 b8 this is what we are going to achieve there is one final stage before we get the output of this function please remember we are still working on the output of this function 
that is we'll be taking this uh, result right we have just now computed using the s boxes eight s boxes we have used and we'll be applying a permutation for permutation as usual we'll use a table so this table will help us in rearranging the bits how it happens is you go to the 16th bit so this is the 16th bit make it the first bit in your output go to the seventh bit so this is the seventh bit make it the second bit in your output like that go to the 20th bit so what is the 20th bit here so this will be the 20th bit you make it the third bit in your output so you use this permutation table and you get your output that is given here so this is the output of this function that you have been computing so far so finally we have attained the output of the function what is that this is and uh, this is how many bits in length 32 bits okay so do you remember why we were computing this function do you remember that initial equation where we have used this function do you remember that so we got l0 r0 from phase 1 right the output to our round 1 this was the output this was the output from phase one, which is an input to our round one. And uh, we use this formula. You remember this, right? And in this formula, when it is round one, we used L1, R1. We computed L1 is equal to R0. And R1 is equal to L0 plus this one. And in the past three or four slides, previous slides, we're working on the output of this. And we have attained the output of this right we know what is the output of this we know what is l0 l0 from phase one input we know what is that and uh, we know what is r0 r0 is also given and since we now know the output of everything we can go and compute r1 r1 is nothing but you take l0 which is coming as input and you perform an xr with the computation of the value from this function the value this particular value we have already computed. So we have computed the value of the output of this function in round one, and we know what is the input to round one. So using this, we are, we are going to find R1. R1 is nothing but L0 and XR with the output of the function we have computed using the S, bo S boxes. So when you perform an XR of L0 with this output of the function, that is R0 comma K1. So both are 32 bits. You're going to get R1, R1, which is also 32 bits. So finally, we have attained R1 and L1. So R1 and L1 is nothing but these two things are our output for round one. And this will be given as an input for round two. Let's go to our block diagram, you'll understand. So out of the permutation and division, our output was L0, R0. We have split that message after permutation. We are giving this as an input to round one here. In round one, we have attained computed L1 and R1. So this is give, going as an input to round two. Again, in round two, we'll perform the computation using the formula. The algorithm is the same. And what we'll compute here is what is L2 and R2? So round two will give us the information on L2 and R2, which will go as an input to round three. What will round three fetch us? Round three will compute as L3 and R3. Like that, we'll be traversing many rounds. How many rounds we have here? 16 rounds. For each round, we will use the keys, say K1 to K16 that we have generated. Each key is of 48 bits. So we'll be propagating through the rounds. So finally, what will be the output of round 16? It will be L16 and R16. So we finished round one. We know what is L1 and R1, right? Can we compute L2 and R2? Can you start round two? So this is L1 and R1 from round one. We have computed that. How will you compute L2 and R2? So you have this formula. 
This is the algorithm behind every round. So we substitute n is equal to 2 for round 2. So it is L2 is equal to R2 minus 1 and R2 is equal to L2 minus 1 plus this function. This is nothing but R2 minus 1 comma K2. So when you reduce it, it will be L2 is equal to R1. We know what is R1. So we know what is L2. What is R2? This is nothing but L1. L1 is also known. Plus, you have to compute the value of this function which uses R1 and K2. K2 is nothing but the key 2. You remember we generated 16 sub keys, right? In this, K2 is the sub key which is 48 bits in length. So that is K2 here. So we know everything we can substitute. We know what is K2. We know what is uh, L2 that is nothing but R1. We have to compute R2. So once when you know L2 and R2, we can be ready with the output of round 2. So L1 plus the function R1 comma K2. So this function uses those eight, eight, eight S boxes and it comes out with the value finally. So like that, you compute L2 and R2. I know it's a very tedious process. We're not going to again start this. It's, it's just the same process that we did in round one, but we'll be it will be leading us to an output of L2 and R2 after round two. So after 16 rounds, what we are going to have here, after 16 rounds, what will be the output here? L16 and R16. The algorithm is the same, only the input gets propagated. And finally, this will be going to our phase four. This is the phase, final phase, which leads us to the cipher text. Let's go to phase four. Say after 16 hectic rounds, we have attained L16 and R16. Now what we are going to do is we are going to give it to the final permutation. So how you achieve this final permutation is we will use this IP inverse table. And this table will in turn take in our L16 and R16, which is of each 32 bits, right? And what we are going to do is L16 is the left side and R16 is the 32 bits on the right side. So we have 32 bits here, 32 bits here. We will just interchange them. We will make it as R16, L16. So that interchange happens here. So R comes first, first 32 bits will be of R, and the next 32 bits will be of L16. Once when you have achieved this, we have to apply the permutation, which is nothing but rearranging the bits in this, uh, um, rearranging the bits here, R16, L16 bits will be rearranged. So it says go to the 40, 40th bit in this R16, L16, make it the first bit. Go to the eighth bit. So what is the eighth bit here? Four plus four, eighth bit make it the second bit in our output. This consists of eight numbers in one column and eight columns. So our final output will be 64 bits. So this is nothing but a rearrangement or a permutation of R16, L16. And this can be represented in hexadecimal. Convert, say four digits will be mapped to an hexadecimal output, right? So this is eight. First four digits is eight. The next four digits is nothing but five. So like that, you transform that to hexadecimal and that is called your cipher text. Finally, successfully we have achieved our cipher text. So what we have encrypted here, we have taken 64 bits, that is one block of message and we have converted that to cipher text using 16 rounds and all that permutations and divisions and we have used 16 sub keys each of 48 bits in length so to we have just used one block that is the first block message m we have attained a cipher text like that we have many blocks right we had m we had m1 so message can have many 64 bit blocks so we will make every block go through the same encryption process and then we'll be getting ciphertext 1, ciphertext 2, ciphertext 3. So whatever we have achieved here, you can, you can consider this to be ciphertext 1 for plain text block 1. So like that, we have to encrypt, we have to create
carry out this process for all the message blocks and we have to send the data so such an encryption will should actually make the hacker feel uh, very pathetic what on hell is that message no matter what i try i'm not able to decrypt it we may think after all these rounds this is how the hacker should feel but let us take a look at the truth the truth is data encryption standard is insecure and they say it's insecure because of its relatively short 56 bit key size so we are taking 64 bits initially and then we are applying the permutation and reducing it to 56 bits so because of this short key size they say it's insecure and in january 1999 they were able to publicly break a des key in 22 hours and 15 minutes so the cipher now is considered insecure and it has been superseded we have a new cipher this is the advanced encryption standard aes which you'll be learning in our next class and des has been withdrawn as a standard by the national institute of standards and technology so even after learning all these rounds and things like that we are really unhappy to know that des is insecure so finally the hackers were able to crack it with this uh, let me end this session and we'll be learning a far better encryption strategy the advanced encryption strategy in our next class i hope you are able to follow this strenuous process on how a plain text block is encoded as a type of text in data encryption standard thank you all